All right, real quick, Microsoft released a study on AI in the workplace, and we're going to get into it. I want to cover some of the big stats here across job families, and then I want to get into what, what we should think about it. So number one, if you are someone who is in a non-tech role, then on average, it's, it's influencing a double-digit change in where you spend your time. So people who were using Microsoft Copilot read 11% fewer emails on average, and they were handling documents and had document throughput that was about 10% higher. So they're putting that time back into Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. Now, if you're in a tech role, it's a little bit different. There, the focus is less on the actual observed change in behavior, and it's more about the potential. And that's really interesting to me because it suggests that developers actually adopting GitHub Copilot are behind the curve relative to knowledge workers adopting Copilot for knowledge tasks. And that doesn't surprise me because technical tasks and writing code is a more complex, nuanced, and precise art form. And it's not something I would expect Copilot to get to right away. In this case, developers are highlighting potential in a couple of areas. Potential, mind you. 44% are reporting that generating tests is an area where AI can help. 37% see AI as potential for documentation. What you see here is that they're not focused on AI as code writer, which has been something that people have made a lot of hype out of, but you don't actually see in the survey results. Moving on to customer success, which is sort of a very customer facing role, you see that there is a lot of agreement from surveyed CS professionals that Copilot is making them feel more fulfilled. I am hypothesizing that this is because Copilot is picking up some of the repetitive language tasks that they would otherwise have to do. You see a similar effect with sales professionals who also have a lot of repetitive language tasks where Copilot or another AI tool would be really effective. I want to call out that one of the benefits that we are not seeing come through here is the general effect on wellness long term of a reported decrease in cognitive load. And frankly, that's not because the study didn't think about that. It's because we just haven't had enough time. The study did call out that using Copilot is reported to be less mentally demanding than just doing it yourself. Substantially, it was like a, a score of 30 out of 100 on mentally demanding. I don't quite know what that means versus 55. The point is it's less. So I've now gone through sort of a quick study. You can actually go and get this, uh, this study and read it yourself. I'll link it underneath the YouTube here so everyone can go and find it and read it for themselves. The thing that I want to call out is the study itself is not something that we can really use to understand actual productivity in the workplace, and the study knows that. In fact, they call out as one area for further discovery, further research, how AI is affecting team productivity. Because it's actually not clear when you look at overall team productivity that we're seeing the gains that we would see when individuals report processing more documents. And that kind of makes sense because if the documents were busy work to begin with, doing more of it doesn't really add value. If the emails were busy work to begin with, doing less of it doesn't add value. The point is that real team productivity gains have to be associated with the team being able to do more meaningful work. And in tech, that's usually finding a way to ship value to customers. That's what really matters. And this study basically calls out that we don't have any idea yet of how AI is actually helping us ship value to customers. And that is concerning, frankly. And it's not concerning in the sense that I worry that we won't have an impact of AI on this, because if, if AI is being adopted as widely as it's being adopted, I think it was up to, the study said 78% of respondents had used AI at least once. We're, we're getting to a point where AI is being tried in a lot of different places. And I would expect that eventually we are going to find applications and use cases where we see effects at the team level simply because of the number of people who are experimenting with this large general purpose technology. I do not know where that team impact is going to come from. And I think that there are real question marks around some of the things we have traditionally considered work 
that could affect and cloud that team picture. So let me give you an example. If I have traditionally been responsible as a manager to write a report every week about what my team is doing, and if the LLM can do an equivalent job on that report in one one hundredth of the time, yes, I have saved time. It is not quite as clear if I have added value other than saving time. Because at the end of the day, what is the opportunity cost of that time? What am I doing as a manager now that I wasn't doing before? And that gets at the team dynamics piece. The question really becomes at that point, is there a strategic context that an individual AI user is operating within that allows them to leverage the time they gain back to really drive effective value for the business? I think that is one of the biggest questions we have in tech right now, and I don't think anybody has a good answer to it. I think in some ways, AI is exposing that we do a lot of busy work in tech and in other white collar industries, and that we haven't had a strategic context to operate within that would allow us to truly leverage more time in the workplace to generate more value. I'm curious what your take is. I know we're gonna be getting more studies on this. I think that team level productivity is going to be a really hot area for AI in 2025. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments.